Hi Internet, welcome to the Dram Bell Society Tasting Room. Today we're going to be exploring the Downmore 12. So the Downmore Distillery is located in the Highlands region of Scotland. Um, I think there's a misconception sometimes you'll see when you see the Highland um, whiskey uh, on the bottles. It doesn't necessarily mean it's actually a no. Highland distillery. Um, whereas this specific Downmore though actually is in the Highlands region. It's physically in that region of Scotland. Uh, we'll put up a map so you can see the, the regions of Scotland because we have uh, the space side, you have your Highlands, you have your Isla or Islands, you have your um, Lowlands and your Campbellton. The distillery began in 1867. It was rumored in the 11th century that the Downmore clan uh, actually saved uh, the king from a 12 point stag. And uh, since then they've used the stag as their their emblem. Yeah, I think um, now uh, any bottle you'll get from Downmore actually has the, the emblem itself. So it's an it embossed um, you know, metal on the, on the specific bottle. Um, really love the look of, of all Downmore stuff. I mean, it's classy. It looks refined. Uh, you know, it's just, it's, for me, it's really interesting to look at. It's a beautiful bottle. It's going to catch your eye on the shelf, 100%. Yeah, I completely agree with that. So, so. so uh, Downmore's master distiller, Richard Patterson, uh, is famous for his uh, $2 million nose, I believe is what, what they call it. Yeah. Um, he's, uh, he's an interesting character, to say the least. Uh, there's a, some great YouTube videos out there uh, where um, we learned that he'll do this, uh, you know, this swish and, swish and Pour, Switch throw, to whatever you want to do. Um, <laughs> if you had a chance, just YouTube uh, Richard Patterson. You'll love it. It's great. Uh, it's really interesting. But uh, he's he's got some great stuff uh, that he's putting out uh, currently at Dalmore. So uh, today, though, we're going to try their uh, introductory whiskey. This is their kind of intro, um, you know, 12-year. All right, let's get in this Dalmore 12. Yeah, please. Let's do. I'm really excited for this one. So we've, we've popped today. Yeah. We've had it, I mean, before, so... Um, I would kind of have an idea on what we're going to be tasting, but uh, it's it's a good one, so uh, it should be interesting and fun for us. All righty. All right, guys. Let's do it. This expression is a 12-year Downmore. It was aged nine years in ex-bourbon casks. The last three years, it was aged in sherry. Um, at least half of it um, goes into the sherry. The other half stays in the bourbon casks. And at the close of the 12 years, they actually blend it back in together. Yeah, so that's uh, a lot of the distillers will do that, and they'll call it uh, their double oak uh, sometimes or triple oak. It mm -hmm. depends on which you know which which barrels they're using or how many they want to do. Uh, for this one specifically, the that Oloroso sherry cask, that Spanish wood is going to give it some really nice dried fruit characteristics. You'll get some dark fruit. Sometimes you can get that really fleshy light fruit too. But mm -hmm. for me, I, I definitely tend to get stuff uh, like plum and, and you know those really dark ones. We'll jump into the flavor so you'll be able to to hear that. But uh, obviously for we know that we're going to get that from that sherry cask. And three years in sherry is it's a pretty good time. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's, I don't know if this one's even naturally colored or not, but it's got a great color to it. So uh, that's going to play some into the, into the actual whiskey flavor and, and its look too. So there is a little uh, artificial color in this one of the E150, I believe it is. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it is. But uh, yeah, typically in the sherry casks, you know, it just finished for the last year or so. So three years is yeah. actually pretty substantial. It's true. And it's, it's going to be dark anyways, even without it. Uh, obviously, they just want that, that color to look rich. I mean, that's we talked about that earlier too. This is kind of how the bottle, uh, their their presentation is. It's, mm -hmm. it's very refined. Uh, and as you see, you can you can tell like that's what they're going with uh, in the Downmore. So let's jump into it, Don. Yeah, let's the nose. Cheers. Cheers. Let's see what we're gonna get off, off this. Oh, right off the bat. So much sherry, immediately. Yeah, this is, it's funny because I know how this tastes, so uh, we're not, I won't jump into it, you know, <laughs> keep, yeah. it keep it kind of structured there, but um, this is not a sherry bomb in flavor for sure, uh, but the, this nose though hits you. The nose is incredible. I mean, like I said, it's, I've, I've smelled and tasted this before, but even then it's still surprising, um, just with how much sherry um, and this has opened up a little bit. I mean, we, it's been sitting here it's been while we've been doing this. So yeah, I mean, it's it's been out for you know twenty minutes or so yeah. sitting here. So it's it's we haven't just done it, which is great. And and I suggest that you do that with your whiskeys too. Um, at least uh, taste the difference between the two. If you want to pour it right away, go ahead and try it and, and drink it. It's going to taste great. Yeah. Uh, but if you let it sit and oxygenate just a little bit, you're gonna you're gonna get some more out of the notes, especially on the nails. Yeah, and I read an interesting tidbit that uh, actually I'm gonna kind of use for myself is most people let it sit or rest for the time it was in the barrel. So if it's a 12 year item, 12 minutes. 12 minutes. It's I a, like that. It's a good guideline. I don't know. I'm gonna start yeah. using. So it. we're over that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're definitely in that range. You no, know, it's a minimum. Um, but yeah, it's also kind of a fun thing where you you know direct pour and actually smell the differences and see. 
uh, if you notice anything yourself. But sure, you'll see us nose too, back and forth. Um, you know, most people have a dominant side um, uh, for their their sense of smell. So you know, for me, to the left, I, I definitely can get more out of it. Um, and one thing I'll say for for most viewers, if you guys want to know how to, how to, there's no right way to drink mm-hmm. or, or or experience whiskey. But for us, make sure your mouth's open when you when you smell. It's going to help bring those vapors into your your um, olfactory sensories in the back mm-hmm. of your nose and, and the back of your palate too. So you're you're getting it at the same time. This is there's so much sherry that it's a little grapey too. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say it's almost wine, right? Like the yeah. wine may be part of this flavor. I mean, I know it's done in cherry, so yeah. that's probably why. So, uh, if, uh, twelve years that are done in in three years finish like that for a sherry cask, you're gonna get a lot more on the nose. You know, punch is gonna be there. So this one for sure is there. It's so sweet that it reminds me of those little orange marmalade jelly packets that you get at diners. Yeah, that's a good one. You get the orange too. Yeah, there's some citrus in there. Yeah, I get cherry off this. Mm-hmm. I don't get like the really dark, rich cherry though. This is a little lighter maraschino. I know we mm-hmm. talked about that. I think on our last podcast, we like when we really hit that that um, abalora and we talked about the abalora. We talked yeah. about being cherry and really yeah. dark, rich flavors. This has got that in there. Not as much. Though. I mean, this is just an amazing nose. I mean, whatever rating system we're gonna use, five out of five, ten out of ten, it's that. Yeah. To me, it is just, it is welcoming. It's um, the. Um, Actually, let my wife taste there or smell it the other day, and she's like, "Well, that smells pretty good." So, someone that's not a whiskey person, uh, it's kind of interesting that they even enjoyed the smell. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's it's definitely there. Uh, this is a, this is an exciting one, and I think you can get uh, people into this uh, whiskey a lot easier if you want to, um, you know, intro this to people who haven't drinking scotch yeah. before, because it's it's definitely got some sweetness on it, and you guys will pick that out right off the bat. Yeah, let's get into the taste. Yeah, let's do it, man. Cheers. So, cheers again, as always. Mm-hmm. Wow. I get, I get, um, I don't know if I can pinpoint a cherry candy, but it, it tastes like a candied cherry yeah. right off the bat. Maybe with a little bit of raisin almost too. Slight bitterness to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but very, very light. Ever so light. Yeah, it's light. You get like a, a barley note, a little woody. Yeah, there's, there's the earthy tone there. Yeah. I kind of, I really like that actually in, in, in whiskey and I'll tell you why. So for me specifically, when you kind of get that, that mealy texture and that, that, um, where it's like, I taste the barley or I t- in a bourbon, I taste the rye or I taste the wheat. Um, yeah. it's, it, it's the, the raw ingredient, right? It's what it's made from. So I kind of want that too. Not always. It just depends on the, the profile, but this has got a great balance yeah, for a 12 year, for a 12 year introductory whiskey in Dalmore's line. This is, this has got a, a really, really interesting palate. I like to just go, even though I've smelled it, I like to go right back to the nose before I taste it again. It kind of enhances the palate a little bit. I agree. Me, uh, each time, and I, you know, you're revisiting it, but uh, man, it's so good. There's not a lot of wood on this. Um, not really. I mean, maybe maybe slightly in the finish, but yeah. but definitely not on the palate or the nose. Well, oddly enough, I do get it on the palate, but it is towards the tail end, towards the finish, because it dries out a little bit. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's, it doesn't have a it doesn't have a sweet finish, not not a long no. sweet finish, and it's got a it's got a, a pretty mellow finish. And mellow is not a good word too, but it's like a short. Well, short's probably better terminology for it, because it doesn't sit there and coat your mouth forever. No. There's not a not a deep oily texture. Um, no. And again, it's only a twelve year, and it's only forty percent ABV. So it's no. you, you're you it's really rare to pull some really deep rich finishes from a. Uh, you know, uh, an alcohol sitting right. at this that's percentage. Yeah, I'd say this is more of a medium finish for me. Yeah. Uh, definitely doesn't hang around too long, but it, uh, it is dry. Um, that, yeah, ABV is real low, as you mentioned. Um, yeah, this is... I think the sherry helps, though, Donnie, to be honest with you, when you start talking about that finish. So when you when we try um, other whiskeys, specifically scotch, and we have an unsherried uh, cast or just finished completely in American oak or... Um, you know, I guess sometimes you get those, those really light sherried ones. Their finishes are are can be really short. Um, not always. Again, there's so much complexity with with Scotch whiskey and what you can pull out of just sitting in a barrel <laughs> for yeah. so many years. Um, but this one is is kind of mid range. It, but it's it's right where it needs to be for for me. Yeah. You know, you know, I'm not looking for that much. It's only a 12 year. We're, yeah. You know, we're not gonna go crazy with it. You know what I'm getting? And I'm a little coffee. 
Your little coffee. I actually said espresso. I think is one of the ones I put on my on my original notes. tasting notes. Yeah, because it, it's it's yeah. light there, and and so and raisins is kind of also why I get into there because with coffee you get bitterness, yeah. and that's and raisins can have a little bit of bitterness too. So there's that crossover. Yeah. Um, and now that I now that I'm kind of getting deep into it, it's it's less raisin. It's actually more of that coffee. coffee that espresso. Yeah, yeah. It's, it settles in there. It's definitely on the back end. No, There's a little bit of a caramel in here too, and, and you're going to get that from that the American the bourbon. Yep. Yeah, I mean, nine years in that yeah. ex bourbon. There's, cast. there's no way there's, you can't avoid it. It's, it's, it's delicious. delicious. Let's yeah, it's great. It's I mean, delicious. yeah, for the for the bourbon junkies, this guy over here. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, so take a look at our tasting notes, guys. They'll be uh, they'll be up on the screen right now. You guys can look at them. Um, you'll see Donnie's uh, and I's um, breakdown. You're going to see um, you know what notes we're getting out of it. And we do a ranking system from one through five on you know the top mm -hmm. those top categories. So your your nose, your palate, your finish, and then we actually add a special one in there called uniqueness. Uh, and uniqueness is just kind of what was interesting about the bottle, what was interesting about the expression, what was interesting about the 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 you know the build for it, um, its look, its color. There's a lot of other things that we throw in there, uh, but you know, let us know what you guys think. Yeah, I remember before trying this uh, a while back, uh, I was getting some floral notes on that, and uh, today I'm not getting any at all. So it's kind of interesting about whiskey that over time, the tasting days, maybe what you had the day before, um, what we had before, just this tasting, how it can affect the tasting, but. I'm not getting any floral on this at all, but um, I had it as my number two tasting note on the last time that I tried this. So I agree. I think uh, for me specifically too, you'll see your environment is going to affect uh, your your nose and your palate a lot of the times. For me, I, I took actually I did this outside. <laughs> That'll change it. <laughs> so it was totally different. I think I put tobacco as one of the one of the the, the notes. I'm not getting it at all inside here. I mean, we're you know we're in an in, enclosed in environment here, so we can control what we're gonna um, you know what outside presences are gonna be. But um, it's it's definitely so. We talked about this before. There is a, an explosion in sherry in the nose, mm -hmm. but not so much in the palate. No. The palate is light for the, for the fruits. In fact, I almost don't get any of that that dried fruit. Maybe a little bit of plum, but uh, I get the cherry for sure, the candied mm -hmm. cherry, and I get that vanilla. Um, and caramel, maybe less vanilla, actually more on the caramel notes there, or honey. Uh, so um, in, it's funny because I, I tend to, when I say honey, I always think um, you know, of this, the viscosity of honey is yeah. so thick. Uh, so it, when you have a, something that has a really long and oily finish, mm -hmm. it, it, that is synonymous with you know, having the honey flavor. It may not even be there. I just, it's in my head as molasses or honey. If you add in like a strong sweetness, then you're for sure, it's like, okay, honey. Yeah. That's what I get, honey. If you don't get that long or that long sweet flavor, then sometimes it's like, okay, it's just a hint of it. Yeah, and this is light. That's what I mean. This is light. That's why yeah. I went caramel on this because it is kind of light there. Yeah. Um, and it's funny now that I'm that I'm going over it again, there's a little bit of wood on the palate. Yeah. It's, you know, it's fresh. It's not It's not old wood. This is, this is definitely yeah. fresh young wood. You know, take take a look at our notes again, guys. You know, go back there and look at them because uh, you know, and, and we're not trying to skew your opinion or, or t you know force you into understanding and, and picking out the flavors that we are uh, that we're grabbing. But you know, we've done this for a while, so I mean, I think we have some idea on I mean, what we're what we're tasting, what we're smelling. But uh, some of the the categories that we like to to rank against, and and this is very subjective. The the specific numbers that we give on nose is just our take on it. But the, some of the important stuff is, you know, is it youthful or is it refined? Is it uh, is the finish watery? Is it creamy? Those are the ones that yeah. will help. Uh, for you know, for me, it'll help people to find uh, like whiskey. And what I mean by like whiskey is stuff that they may also enjoy in that same context, and then pick yeah. those whiskeys out. Yeah, what do you get as far as a youthful first refined on this one? Because I'm actually a little bit of a mixed bag here. Yeah, so this one's a little, for me, it's actually, I went more youthful on this one. I think I went like yeah. two. Um, it, it just, it, it's definitely a little bit more youthful. It, and it's a 12 year, so it should be. It yeah. shouldn't be, there shouldn't be that much richness in it. It, it. Though it is rich in flavor, and rich is again a very open term. Because what does rich mean to you? It may be, may, for Donnie, it may mean something completely different than what it means for me. That's how I take it. Rich is, for me, it's just that mouthfeel, the texture. Does it kind of overcome your senses? Um, but yeah, no, it's, so this one I definitely put on the more youthful side as well. Yeah, and we nose our whiskeys quite frequently here. You'll notice that. And, you know, again, to go to go back to, to our, the famous uh, Richard Patterson here, uh, he's the nose. You know, I mean, he, he'll, he'll tell you, watch his stuff, and he is like, uh, you know, he does the, hello, 
How are you? Yep. You know, I can't do the Scottish accent. Sorry, I suck at it. <laughs> He's the but, nose and he knows. But it's he, he it's great. <laughs> and uh, you know, the one thing that I don't agree with is I don't I don't swish and I don't throw my whiskey out. I don't have enough of it. <laughs> To waste there. He's got whiskey to sell. Yeah, I was going to say, he's got an endless (laughs) supply. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, There's some great documentaries out there if you guys want to to take a look at, too. The the Golden Dram's a good one. Uh, Brew Cloudy Distillery um, worked um, closely with Ian McEwen, and um, they have a a brand new uh, documentary out called The uh, Water of Life? Or The Water? Yeah. I think it's Water of Life, right? Yeah. Now. It's um, I have I've only watched part of it. It's, it's really good. You can't get it everywhere. You kind of have to subscribe to their website specifically to get access to it. But uh, from what I've seen, it's it's great. So um, these are these are huge names in the whiskey industry in the Scotch whiskey industry. So you know we talk about them. We don't know them, obviously. It'd be great to meet those kind of people. But yeah. for us, the, you know, we just we just know who they are and what they bring to the to the table. So. And this is one of the things that we're actually kind of educating ourselves on more recently because mostly it's about the whiskey, but now it's more of the history uh, about the distillery, who the distillery, the distillers are, um, yep. and kind of what their processes are. So this is going to be a big learning curve for us. So it's going to be exciting for us to learn these things and share them with you. I agree. I think the longer you do this, uh, it kind of just comes, with, and this may not just necessarily be with, with whiskey drinking and just in life. If you have a passion for something and you really enjoy it, mm-hmm. you know, for me, I definitely want to learn as much as I can about it. Or at least do you know some background, so I kind of have an idea of what we're doing. And a great thing is like to understand how whiskey's made. You know, maybe we'll do a maybe we'll do a, a segment on that. You know how the, the basic yeah. history on how you make whiskey. Um, this is just like beer, it's just distilled again. <laughs> it's the same, same beginning same process. process. You know we won't get into that because yeah. if you don't know how beer is made, then you're going to be I don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. But there's some there's some great stuff out there. So you know take take a look on YouTube. There's there's tons of tons of videos out there. Absolutely. So. Man, I, I, I'm just trying to get back into this nose here, and it's still got that. It's still got the the cherry and the and the real deep, deep. Like, and we said raisin, but it's definitely more coffee. The nose is sherry water. Yeah, it is. It's a sherry bomb, and that's another term you'll you'll hear. It it really is in the nose, in the nose only though. So I'm gonna come yeah. back to this. Yeah, it's just there. This is one where the nose does not match the palate. And it's not a bad thing at all. Sometimes it is nice where it matches because you kind of know what you're getting into. Um, yeah. So we do um, one thing we do with our tastings, uh, and, and you know, don't don't um, you know beat us up with this, but we'll do uh, celebrity lookalikes. Yeah. Um, did you have one for this? Because I had one, and I'll tell you mine if you want. I don't remember. Okay, I've got mine out. So, and this is not. I didn't actually. I'm not using the actor because a lot of the times we like to use characters. Mm-hmm. So for me, uh, I I said Kevin from The Office. Okay. Yeah. So the reason I say that is because <laughs> it's simple yet satisfying. Yeah. yeah that's just, I'm just going to go with that, you know, and I love Kevin. I mean, who doesn't love Kevin from yeah. the office, but you know, that's just my piece there. So and now I wish I looked that up before the episode. <laughs> I do not remember at all. <laughs> but we, do a, go. we do a lot of tastings. We do a lot. I know I got some, um, some good ones in the vault there that uh, we'll bring out eventually. That uh, is, is quite a chuckle. Yeah, this is this is a great one, guys. Um, and I believe you can get this for under sixty bucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, generally, at, at most liquor stores, this is readily available in the U.S. Uh, you can, I mean, most even grocery stores is, are are going to carry this down more twelve. Um, so uh, this is a pickup for me. Uh, and we always one thing we always ask in our in our tasting reviews is, would you buy it again? It's either it's either yes, no, or if someone gave it to me, I'd take it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who's gonna say no to that third one, but you know, for me, this is a yes. This is a yes. This, this should be on your on your shelf, hundred percent. And I've had, I think, at this point, three Dalmore expressions, and this is actually my favorite. Um, I would rate this personally, which is really weird, over the cigar malt and even the King Alexander. Just a personal preference. That nose carries a long way for me, though. So if you're to compare palate to palate, maybe that King Alex, you know, may edge it out. But when you include the nose. Uh, this one's definitely my top Dalmore. It is up there. Um, our, I, when we did the distillery edition for that Dalmore King Alexander, did we do uh, all um, Dalmore? Was it, a it was Dalmore? Region. It was a region, so it was a Highlands region. And in the Highlands region, we had there were t- two Dalmores that we tried: the Cigar Malt, the Cigar Malt, and, and the King Alexander. Uh, we didn't have the twelve in there because we weren't doing a distillers only edition, which we do. We do do those, and those are fantastic too. And those will be posted too. Uh, we'll, we'll throw them up on our YouTube mm-hmm. channel. Some of them broken out because they last four hours, five hours. Yeah. You, know, you can't watch five hours of us just drinking. I mean, no. If you want to, <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll put it up there. But it's a lot of. We'll nonsense. do a live event. We'll do. Yeah, it's a lot of nonsense, <laughs> which is fine. Uh, but I, I kind of agree with Donnie. I actually did like the out the King Alexander the Third 
it edged it a little bit more only because I, there was some uniqueness there that I wasn't picking out at the, the cigar malt. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not a huge peated whiskey fan. I know the cigar malt's not technically peated. It's they, they, they blended it so it would be um, um, good with a cigar. Yep. Right? That's the idea. Yep. That sweet. it would be complimentary to smoke a cigar sweet. And I like sweet whiskey. But um, it just, I don't know. This, this I think, for if you, if you want to talk price and you want to talk availability, this is a go-to. I mean, it's, yep. it's a, it, this would edge it out. Yep. One of the benefits of the cigar malt, though, is just it's a little bit more oily, oily texture. Yeah. So it helps with the cigars rather than a drier finish where a cigar is going to dry your mouth out and then another dry finish for a whiskey. May not complement it as much, but that's just one of the benefits of uh, doing exclusive cigar malt. I agree. You're going to have a, a really sweet finish and a long finish. It's going to help when you're when you're smoking cigars if you're into Definitely. that kind of thing. And whiskey and cigars are synonymous with, with each other. They are prevalent in just about any Instagram. Yeah. I'm sure we'll do some <laughs> cigar too. segments down the road. So you know, stay yeah. tuned for those. Mm -hmm. uh, but this this is, good, this is a good one, guys. So grab your glass. Cheers to you. Cheers to you. And from the Dram Bell Society, may you enjoy your dram one grand at a time. It is, and the, thing, the, well, the, the flavor's there too in the palate. It's simpler, I think, for sure. You know, it's funny when we compare this to like the, the 12 that we you know, drank. Uh, 